Well, I guess now's a good a time to record about ants as any. So here I am gardening. Uh, actually, not that plant, oddly enough, but it's a white variety. Uh, but the nursery I went to, they kind of just put pots uh, they like. People move those things around, but more importantly, we have a uh, colony of, uh, looks like Nylandria, it's a long F species names, like Faisonia or something. So i just remove that. Tuck that there. We have the uh, workers, a bunch of larvae here. And the species, uh, actually the whole genus, Nylandria, is uh, they're considered tramps. And it's because um, I drove all the way from uh, to a different county in New Jersey, and uh, I bought a plant from a nursery there. And here I am in my county of uh, Camden, New Jersey. Uh, not the city of Camden, just the county. But, um, and I appear to have brought home a colony of this, which I'm not uh, annoyed about at all, but um, because I probably already have this species from other you know, plants that I <laughs> have bought from this nursery. But I'm just showing that, you know, that's how these kinds of things spread around. So if I actually dig in here a little bit, I probably would find... Oop, no, they're all going down there anyway. I probably would find the uh, queen and, uh, you know, several... Uh, Alates and stuff. Actually, they may have flown already for the year. Uh, but it's just kind of neat that, you know, you can just kind of, you know, hold an entire ant colony in your hand, you know, for a moment. But, like, that's kind of how this stuff happens. So, uh, this is spiderwort, and they make kind of a fibrous uh, root. Uh, I think they're technically microscopic, but it makes so many of them that they are sort of web-like. And it's almost, uh, almost making, like, a type of, um, it reminds me of like a live plant, at the, uh, like the living plants that uh, uh, actually hollow out uh, areas for ants to live in. So I don't know if this is doing that because they're actually like a bulb and stuff, but when you get a, you know, one bulb that's dividing and doing its thing, you know, just uh, you know, producing all the roots, they have these larger tap roots that are meant to go deeper into the ground, but they're, this has been growing uh, in this pot for so long that it's taken on the shape of the uh, root. It's what gardeners call root bound. And uh, you can see a few additional plants are in here, some types of grass and things. But anyway, let's uh, plant this uh, ant colony and some spider wart in my garden here. The lightning strike twice. <laughs> uh, not in this pot, though, I do see a hole to something that maybe used to be here. These pots, sometimes more of them, you know, colonies move around. Oh, wait. Yeah, I see a tetramorium in there. Though, I think that just crawled on there from down below, because I do have a tetramorium in my yard. Probably living under the weed fabric. I actually love weed fabric for some reason, so. So this is actually what I have uh, here, but, um, one thing I will note is the uh, little hairs around the pollen anthers on these are actually uh, uh, purple, but the rest of the flower is completely white aside from the pollen. And it is spiderwort, so they close up. You can tell this is like after four o'clock because that's when they, they all close up. But early morning, you know, that's when the uh, ants really, really shine. And that way they can kind of ensure pollination happens by just kind of training their pollinator. And no, I don't see any in here, so, yeah. Gardening by the uh, plant three by five of everything rule, and uh, apparently I got an ant colony out of it, but not one that I want to keep. So. so those are all planted, and this is kind of a weird garden, I have to say, um, <laughs> for lots of reasons. One, I had uh, dreams of, you know, hey, I live in New Jersey, let me grow blueberries, and a few of the plants were successful, but of, like, 16 I've planted here, uh, they don't really like it here. So I'm kind of coming to terms with the fact that they're on their way out. Uh, I do amend the soil and I do things like uh, you know, plant sunflowers to pull nitrogen out of the soil because they like acidic soil and I figure that'd be great to do that. But also, you know, I like planting uh, other things here. Um, my uh, collection of some of my uh, milkweeds are here. There's the standard incarnata, which is about the flower. Uh, and then I have red, uh, no, um, you have red. This is purple milkweed, which is not flowering yet, but, you know, you can see it has a uh, purple vein in the leaf. Also, it's pointed, and the flowers are happening at the tops of um, 
the uh, growth points. I have another one down here. It's slightly, it's only half the size. I don't know why, but that's that's that. But benefit to sunflowers here is I always see ants interacting with them. Uh, the plant itself, you know, this is the annual sunflower, and kind of something funny. Um, bird feeders right over there. So we get birds that will get a mouthful of sunflower seeds, and they fly to a perch somewhere, <laughs> such as this false indigo tree, and additional sunflowers inevitably just kind of fall out of their mouth or fall out of their beak or whatever. So I have sunflowers here that I didn't plant that are also coming up, so birds are helping. Uh, sunflowers also are really treasured by lots of different ant species too, so there's this kind of this natural thing happening here. Uh, a little later in the year I'll be sure to show you, because these are these are going to get like leaf hoppers and things on them, and especially as, you know, this is a, <laughs> a sunflower I kind of cheated. Um, but I still see action here. Uh, so we have the goldfinch. Remember, like sixth, seventh, or eighth grade, you're probably learning um, in science class or biology uh, Darwinism, Darwin's uh, finches and stuff. And our state bird happens to be the goldfinch. And if you want to actually see the goldfinch, uh, their beak is actually designed to pull <laughs> sunflower seeds right out of the flower disk. So I know so many people in New Jersey who have never seen a goldfinch and say, why is that even our state bird? No one's ever seen it. And the reason is you have to grow the plant that <laughs> the bird's beak is designed to drill seeds out of. They use other things like liatris and coneflowers and stuff like that. Uh, most of which, if you don't leave up all year round, they don't have access to the seeds, so they don't do a whole lot there. But anyway, let's explore the yard a bit and see what uh, ants I can find here now, you know, before things get too overgrown outside here. Yeah, I usually have a uh, Campanaz castanius colony here, but this year they seem to have moved on, or died out. This year it is a Phenogaster rudis colony, and what appears to be a, uh, I call them woolly aphids, but I don't think they're technically aphids at all. But this would be their reproductive uh, larva, I believe. And the queen must not have been that far away. Oh yeah, lots of woolly aphids here. These will get up on uh, plants later on in life, once they, I guess, molt or do something. And then they will, uh, you'll see like lots of, um, it's technically like waxy fluff, but it just, it looks like hair. Very weird. But the uh, ants don't seem to mind that they're cohabitating the same spot. Hmm. Oh, there's one on my camera now. Alright. While we're here, this is the trillium that was planted by the ants, and it was flowering this year up until a rabbit decided to uh, eat all the reproductive parts out of it. <laughs> and as I typically see with these plants, uh, ants frequently get stuck uh, walking on top of them. I don't know what purpose that uh, serves, but this is a Temnothrax. And down here at the stem, I see a Prelipus in Paris. I'm not sure where their colony is, but zoom out a bit more. Yep, oh, there it is. <laughs> And again, more of these insects here. My camera would like to focus on them. There's a springtail. I believe they're in the same family as cicadas. Yeah, so they must be nesting about there. They usually don't nest under stones that I've noticed. It's uncommon. They're more open uh, forest habitat here. Of course, this colony proves me wrong by having yet more tunnels uh, under here. This could just be like a foraging trail or something. They do move on occasion. I have found that. The seed pod to a woodland poppy. And it's hard to believe I started with just four of these plants because they have it's downright right taken over some parts of the yard, and I want to say, uh, yeah, I can see one off in the far distance, uh, that, not on camera, or not in front of the camera anyway, 
but some of them still have flowers on them. If I pop this open, yep, looks like uh, the seeds are ready for dispersal. <laughs> Uh, this plant does stain your hands quite a bit. So if I just drop this here, I have only hesitantly uh, helped spread this plant around. I never really throw them anywhere, but I'll, you know, if I have like a stepping stone, I might set up a pod just so I can photograph what's, uh, you know, what ants come to it and see what happens there. So this whole area is probably going to be woodland, woodland poppy in two years. So, of course I was just coming from you know, over here, so not that big of a jump. Yep, this uh, kind of shaggy leaf all through here, woodland poppy. <laughs> and you can see a seed pod there, and down here you can see a flower. <laughs> So this is a wild rose, um, I want to say Virginiana, it's, it's, it's something I kind of bought and forgot the name of and just never bothered with and really I'm not that interested in roses, but it is a native species, I, I know that from where I bought it. And uh, it's kind of neat seeing what, uh, you know, comparing it to other roses that have bred uh, from it um, and seeing what... Uh, interacts with it. What are you? Oh, you're a spotted lantern fly, you little bastard. Let's crush you. Yeah. Get out of here. I've been doing that uh, quite frequently this year. Not so much. They, like, only just arrived, so... <laughs> but if it's anything like where I work, um, yeah, there's gonna be storms of them come fall. <laughs> but with this rose, uh, it's actually not in the best spot, which is a good thing. It's it's not the best spot because it doesn't get enough sunlight. If it did, it would actually be covered in a whole lot more flowers. But also if it did, it would be uh, suckering more than it already is, because I think I initially planted it, like, over here somewhere, and it's just been sending up stems that travel through the soil, and <laughs> I, it's neat watching it do that, but it's starting to interact. It's, it's, it's slowly coming over here to this plant that has no thorns at all. <laughs> It's a very similar flower. Uh, actually, you can kind of pluck that off. Uh, this is the red flowering uh, raspberry, <laughs> which is not thorny at all. It doesn't even have prickers either. Like I mean, most raspberry plants, they have they have thorns or little prickles on them. Uh, they do have uh, canes that are annual, so I can just kind of cut that out. Annual or biannual, one of the two. But so the canes eventually die, and they send up whole new canes that will do their thing in flower and they simply form a colony that usually takes over like the forest edge or so. Um, you can get fruit off of them, my patch. I think cross-pollination is vital. I don't think I, I think this is all a clonal population, which is what I get for buying from two separate nurseries who bought from each other. <laughs> yeah, that's annoying, but anyway. So in addition to having a cool little, uh, you know, Easter display this year, um, uh, my actual plan was to have uh, additional pots and things spread throughout the yard and to see what uh, uh, lives under them. Because, you know, just having structures to look under, it's like a, it's, it makes anting so much easier. Uh, this is a fairly new pot, so no one's really taken root yet. Probably nesting inside the pot. But, you know, a new queen ant or something comes along, probably find, you know, a pot that's, you know, regularly getting some sort of water or getting hit by the hose. I mean, this is a, you know, piss poor display of a flower. Um, uh, uh, setting, but, you know, you get the idea, you know, she'll probably be, you know, good to set up a shop here. Uh, over here, I don't see too much action either, even though this is a log that's been in my yard for quite a while. Uh, however, it, because it is solid wood, there's a chance that, uh, new ants and, you know, little colonies as such are nesting inside of it. So, it's also good to have, uh, those in the yard also. Uh, also, um, apparently we're and golf balls. <coughs> uh, leaf litter, it's a good thing and a bad thing. It's good because things like springtails like to eat that, and that's what's hunted by the, um, uh, help me out over here, uh, strumogenes and other, you know, prostradium and stuff like that. Uh, it's bad because it, you know, <laughs> unless I'm specifically looking for those things, I really don't care. <laughs> 
but it kind of gets, gets in the way. And the Campanatus pensilvanicus here, a perennial sunflower. And then I have tons of jewelweed coming up, because I actually thought that would be a great idea to throw a seed pot of jewelweed in the yard. And it is, and uh, it isn't. So, yeah, jewelweed, 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 jewel pie weed. Uh, jewelweed, trilliums, Virginia waterleaf. <laughs> Uh, Joe Pie Weed, I thought I weeded out, but it's still here. <laughs> Came back with a vengeance. Yeah, so this is kind of like what the Trillium Garden becomes. <laughs> and uh, this is Virginia Creeper. Ooh, where's the planted lantern flies? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Little bastards. Yeah. But anyway, this is Virginia, not Virginia Creeper. Cross vine, we'll call it. Uh, it's a native vine. Hummingbirds love it. Um, spreads by root suckers. I hate the thing. So, even though it's native, it used to grow all along our fence here. In fact, it still is <laughs> growing all along our fence here. Uh, yeah. Not the best plant, though. When it does flower, though, lots of ants inside the uh, flower stealing nectar. So, this is another uh, rose vine in my yard. And um, it's, <laughs> it's called Fruity Petals, and it's, it's like... Well, I thought, oh, that's a darling name. Let me grab that rose for my uh, my niece. And then I, I grow the thing, and it's the inspiration for barbed wire. Um, yeah, it also makes uh, crushing the spotted lantern flies a, an interesting, you know, <laughs> an interesting task. <laughs> uh, so I might let them live on this one, just because I don't want to get my uh, I don't want to stab one of these things through my through my uh, my hand here. <laughs> There's a pretty sizable thorns on this uh, expletive deleted. Yeah, but anyway, roses. Uh, they get lots of insects, like sharpshooters and things. And uh, eh. oh, shit, there's one under this leaf. Yeah, anyway. All right, I'll I'll save that for later. But um. Yeah, they get like, usually they actually get like tons of aphids and stuff, especially around the where the uh, the flower buds are. And that just drips down lots of uh, ants taking advantage of that. And Campanatus pensilvanica certainly is one of them. And I have more milkweed just randomly planted in the middle of this uh, uh, rose bush. Don't tell me you guys eat milkweed too. I mean, what don't you guys fucking eat? Jesus Christ. So also setting seed today apparently is a twin leaf plant, which uh, produces this little, it's like a happy frog or acorn-like uh, structure at the top of a stem where there used to be a flower. And uh, I see an ant there kind of taking interest in it, but it's, uh, I mean, no one's really doing anything with them. <laughs> I don't think this just popped open, too. It might have been open for a day or two. But we can see if... Oh. Yeah. This is actually not one of the plants that I would recommend uh, for a beginner. <laughs> but anyway, the idea with this is uh, they have Eliasome on the seeds here, which is that little white packet on there, and that's basically ant food. So the ant... Uh, for this to be uh, Mermico Cori, they just need to carry it away from the parent plant. They don't necessarily bring it back to the nest, they don't necessarily plant it, they just disperse it. And, you know, helps if the ant actually, you know, realizes, oh, this is, you know, we can't do much with this, you know, the Eliasome dried up or something. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and it's, you know, that's, that's all it really needs to be. I'm going to manually just dump those there, because I don't feel like doing uh, anything with those myself. But, um, yeah, it's not a plant that I really recommend... Uh, for beginners. Uh, I don't, I mean, I'm not doing anything special with it, it's just, it's so little for what it is. So here's another one over here, and the seed pod is so tiny compa by comparison. There is a single seed inside of this. <laughs> Maybe there were, you know, five at one point, <laughs> but, you know. And I could be doing more to make this garden nicer. The prob problem, problem is this plant here is <laughs> it just grows up and falls over everything. Uh, one that I would recommend over twin leaf, though, would be trilliums, which actually look you know, kind of stately. You know, here's one here. This is actually a trillium flexipes, and they'll be ripe a little bit later in the year, maybe in a few weeks. Um, 
flaxseed beets are supposed to turn red for deer to actually eat, and then they digest, and then the seeds are ready first year to germinate. Um, my limited experience with trimming flaxseed peas are the plants I see at the Mount Cuba Center and the ones I grow here, which are not pollinated as well as others. I might just have like a weird population that does not produce the red seed pod, but yeah, you know, it just you know might just be me. Um, but anyway, uh, as far as I know, with trilliums, uh, different types of ones. I mean, if if the red thing is true, then maybe it should be true for this uh, trillium, uh, it's either cuneatum or sesley, uh, <laughs> which has a nice burgundy colored uh, seed pot. I know it's a little hidden here, but a little later in the year these will split open and either wasps or ants will uh, basically do the same thing I was just talking about with the uh, twin leaf there and drag the seeds about. <laughs> and uh, if they find a good spot they will start to grow in two years. Two years I think more because the, uh, yeah, they want the ant colony to have vacated. In fact, Trillium grandiflorum, I think their seeds actually produce a foul odor when they start to uh, germinate. I hear that from growers anyway. I have not experienced it myself, so I can't really confirm that. But I have Trillium grandiflorum over here. And yeah, they're getting there too. Usually when you can see the seeds right through the pod, and I, it means you're get, you're either ripe or you're you're getting there. These are getting there. I would love those to be much bigger seed pods, though, than what they are. But again, with uh, I mean, this is a, you know it's going to turn into a horrible weed in my yard <laughs> a year or two. But um, <laughs> I mean, you get the, the flowers and you get the uh, multiple seed pods per plant. Uh, assuming it was pollinated. Actually, I think they can self-pollinate, so you don't even need multiple plants for that. Um, but I started with four, and that turned into um, a fair amount of back here just kind of turning into them. Uh, it's actually, you know, I mean, I mean <laughs> it's pretty easy to control. It's nothing a lawnmower can't fix, you know, <laughs> so, or just, you know, a day of, uh, you know, put on some garden gloves and rip them out. Um, yeah, but I should uh, probably thin the herd a little bit here, because I see other things. In here, you're a new pot from Easter. What's going on with you? Anything? Ooh, Lassius. Yeah, I believe this is the Interjectus colony that's in my yard. And I may set up the uh, black light in a day or two, just because it's getting uh, the start be hot. And it figures the same. Uh, Nylandria um, species from the start of our video that I just installed the new colony of is already established and, you know, was the uh, ant that showed up to disperse the woodland poppy seeds. Yeah, so anyway, thank you for watching, and uh, goodbye.